giving me the thumbs up. That means it's go time. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming to the Art of Reanimating Plants for Zombies 2. Uh, I know there's a, a happy hour and a bunch of parties going on right now, so just to see even one person, especially these guys up here, uh, there's a PopCat party, so my whole team isn't here except for these two. Um, so the Art of Reanimating Plants for Zombies 2. First thing you got to know, who's the guy talking to you? I'm Mark Barrett. Uh, I'm a lead artist on Plants vs. Zombies 2. I'm an amateur power pointer. I'm a private dancer, a dancer for hire. And uh, if you want to get a hold of me, you should take a picture or write this stuff down really, really quick. Uh, or you can come talk to me after. Uh, this is the art team of Plants vs. Zombies 2. They are good folks, but they are not to be trusted, especially with Photoshop. They told me, <laughs> I took this picture, they said, don't worry, we'll put you in there. And they did. Um, so what do I mean by the art of reanimating? I was trying to make a pun, but it's not great. Um, a zombie pun. The art of reanimating is a behind-the-scenes look at the art of Plants vs. Zombies 2 and how we made the old new again. So uh, to do that, we have to talk about what is Plants vs. Zombies. Um, the basics are it's a casual tower defense style game as zombies move right to left across the screen and lanes to get to your house and eat your brains. You stop that from happening by collecting sun, planting plants, and placing them strategically on the board to stop the zombie horde. Didn't mean to rhyme that. Uh, the game is set on and around your house in the suburbia um, with the help of your crazy neighbor Dave you can discover the source of the zombie scourge and hopefully stop it once and for all. Unless that game turns out to be a hit, in which case it was always a planned trilogy. Uh, PBZ was a hit. Um, they did not expect that. Uh, and I can brag on it because it had very little to do with it. Um, it won over 30 Game of the Year awards. Uh, it got a 90% and still has a 90% on Metacritic. And it's loved by millions of people, including me. Uh, the, Plants for Zombies is the reason why I work at PopCap. Um, it's the reason I, why I wanted to work at PopCap. And uh, as you know, when a game does really, really well, this happens. Yeah, that, that would be great. Uh, but right away, there was a, a bit of a problem, a big problem. The original creative team behind Plants vs. Zombies had already worked on the game for more than half a decade, and they wanted to move on and do something new. And thus began Amateur Hour. Uh, I was a new hire, and we had a very small, very new team. We were assembled and given mission papers, make a great sequel or die trying. We were tasked to make a five-year-old game feel new again, and we had no idea how that was done. So we went to the shrine of Miyamoto, and we prayed. Nintendo makes it look so flippin' easy, but the truth is, reinventing a classic is a high-wire act. If you don't change it enough, then it's boring and it's unoriginal. Change it just a little, but mess with the wrong element in the design, and it can make people really uncomfortable. And if you change too much, <laughs> you're not a plumber. It was our mission not to let this happen to PVZ. We committed ourselves to make a sequel that both honored the original and improved as much as possible without becoming creepy porn stars. So if standing here today, if I could go back in time and hand myself a map, uh, I, the map would say, if you, the map on how to make plants for zombies too, it would say four things. It would say, make new plants, new zombies, new environments, easy, that's obvious. Add plant food to give every plant a temporary boost, allowing users a chance to discover new abilities hidden away in plants both old and new, and it's ridiculously fun. I would say, travel through time and explore an ever-expanding universe. And I would say, design everything to be optimized for mobile and handheld. And voila, PVZ2 is so obvious. But the truth is, at first, we had no idea what the hell we were doing. And so we turned to what seemed at the time to be the most obvious choice, a farm. Because hey, 
plants grow on a farm. Farmville was exceptionally hot at the time, and the idea of doing seasons sounded amazing. We thought you could have a barn, and instead of lawnmowers, you could have animals like a goat and a cow, because they chew grass like the lawnmower does, uh, and they could attack the zombies. Or maybe the zombies kidnap the animals, and you rescue the animals from zombies. After all, animals have brains too. The chickens would have little tiny peanut brains for zombies to snack on. Um, but we didn't really want to call the game Plants and Animals versus Zombies. And that did not stop us from designing zombie tractors. Um, because at that period, every idea was awesome. Um, it sounded great, so we got down to business and started drawing up farm zombies. We always start with a rough sketch exploration. And I was really inspired by uh, the art from uh, that Tim Burton movie, uh, Corpse Bride. Uh, they drew on the back of cereal boxes, so I drew these. I scanned in the cereal box and drew on the back of it in Photoshop. Very nerdy. Um, we choose the best one of these rough designs, and then we do a full color sketch of the ideas that we see have promise. And this guy on the left, he can throw a plant around anywhere on the board, and the guy on the right, he puts that scarecrow down when he is defeated, and uh, that acts as a shield for the plants coming up behind, or for the zombies coming up behind him. Uh, so you can see we got pretty far along with these guys. Uh, our first problem with the farm setting seems really obvious now, almost so obvious that I'm actually embarrassed. Uh, but it turns out people generally have a pretty limited number of images in their head when they think of farm. And when you're designing a zombie, the most important thing you want to give the player is a visual sign as to what each uh, zombie will do. Some of those metaphors, like pitchfork and scarecrow, work awesome. But sometimes the most obvious visual metaphor was not necessarily very farmy. So it was a bit of a battle between mechanics and appearance. And another problem you can see in these early zombie drawings is that I've already crossed the line as far as retaining the spirit of the original game. Ask a stranger on the street what the character on the left is from, and they would say, Plans for Zombies. They've seen it. They know it. They probably love it. But ask them what game the guy on the right is from, they would have no idea. It's a completely different zombie. In trying to make something new, and maybe bringing a little vanity to the table, I changed everything. And in changing everything, I made it unrecognizable. The style and the zombies were not our only difficulty. On a farm, you have a house or a barn, but anywhere else, and you really don't have a dwelling for the player's brains to hide inside. And on a farm, there's a lot of open field. You can see three of my four concepts are in an open field. And if a zombie gets from the right side of an open field to the left side of an open field, there's not a lot of drama. Um, so you can see there's a lot of cool ideas but we would have to go back to a farmhouse again, and that seemed too much like the original. And we didn't want to make Plants vs. Zombies 1.5. We wanted to make the two. Really, the only thing that was working for us on the farm is the thing that gave us the idea of a farm, and that was the plants. <clears throat> we found the plants, though, could work just about anywhere. These are my very first drawings on Plants vs. Zombies 2, period. They said, hey, why don't you draw some plants? We'll see. Maybe there's a project in the works for you. Um, so I went all out. And these were a lot of fun to draw, uh, but they are not quite PVZ. So I went back to the original lineup. And if basic zombie is the baseline of Plants vs. Zombies, then these three plants are the melody. And if we messed these up, then it wouldn't matter if we got everything else right. So they were really a great place to start when learning uh, how and where to bring the two. In creating new versions of an old character, it actually is useful to intentionally break it sometimes. It can help you discover what the core elements are. And once you find the limits on that character, you can really hone in on areas uh, you might be able to make it better. So for PVZ2, we knew we were moving to mobile, and we decided to switch from an illustrative style of the original to a much more graphic, easier to read at a small size vector asset created in Flash. And uh, the original I've kind of outlined, um, illustrative, I mean, 
hand-drawn in Photoshop, varying line thickness, it has lots of small nu nuanced details, and it's not optimal for animation. It's designed to be an illustration. Uh, in a graphic style, we, we work in Flash. Uh, the lines in Flash are math-based, so they're consistent. Um, we colored those lines. Uh, we kept clean, simple shapes and made them more efficient for animation. Uh, and this out outlines some of the major stylistic differences. Um, and that was led mostly by what looks great on a small screen. Uh, there is the same slide, I think, just with a couple more words. Uh, so with that in mind, um, I kept the changes minor, but still meaningful. In redesigning Sunflower, one thing I wanted to do was brighten her up, uh, make her silhouette look more like a sun, and uh, I knew that she was going to be happy. She was going to be happy, and I refer to her as a she. You, she can be whatever uh, you want. Um, but I wanted her to have little petal arms that she could wiggle whenever she made a sun for the player. So that's what that's all about. Um, here's the same progression with Pea Shooter. And another thing that we did uh, that really helps with appeal, I kind of learned from Pixar, is you just pump the characters full of air, like a balloon, to make them rounder and more dimensional. And that's useful for animation as well as uh, creating physical merchandise later down the line, like toys, etc. And for the walnut, uh, I was absolutely determined to make it look less like a potato. Everyone calls the original walnut potato. I failed, though, because it still happens. Uh, some people said the, the chubby wrinkles on the one on second to the left made him look soft when he's supposed to look hard like a nut. And other people said he looked too much like a scrotum. <laughs> and after that, I really didn't mind so much if they called him potato. Uh, since the plants were the only thing that were really working on the farm, and we knew they could work basically anywhere, we decided to throw them in a suitcase and head out on a road trip. With Crazy Dave as our whacked out navigator, we hopped in an RV and hit the road across the United States. No, the world. This idea was great, but really short-lived. Um, we did a few explorations, football stadiums, Paris, Egypt, but Egypt is where we stopped with that one because Egypt is where we really got somewhere. You see that on the right? That is more than blatant copyright infringement. <laughs> that, my friends, is a sweet, beautiful, interdimensional time warp. And that turned out to be the perfect theme for Plants vs. Zombies 2. I submit to you, if you can choose any theme for your game, that time travel... Excellent! Is a, <laughs> is a most excellent theme. A cue came a little later. Uh, yes. Um, Time travel was perfect because each new time period allowed us to put a fresh coat of paint on all of the original mechanics. For example, the game board has three basic elements, house on the left, grid in the middle, a place for zombies to come from on the right. We match those elements, improve them meaningfully. Here the only real changes are muting the background color so the characters pop off a little more and give ourselves changes are muting the background color so the characters pop off a little more and give ourselves more space for user interface. Little shout out to George Fan and Rich Werner down there in the corner, uh, the original designer and artist. Um, anyway, after you reestablish that feeling of familiarity, of being home with the player, then you can do anything. You can theme it. You can create totally new mechanics, totally new experiences. And for us, as I said, the theme of time travel worked remarkably well. In updating the classic basic zombie, we gave it a larger head that's easier to see on smaller devices and simpler feet to animate. And that's it. Less is sometimes way, way, way more. If you ask somebody what that character on the right is, they'll say, Plants vs. Zombies. I don't know if they would even be able to tell you if it was one or two. I hope they would know it was two. I worked really hard. <laughs> um, so before, with the farm, and with the road trip even, we were trying to reinvent everything, and we thought that that was how you made it new. Uh, we replaced one thing with another. So we replaced the cone with a boot, replace the bucket with a 
slightly crappier bucket. I was wrong. We came to not only understand, but embrace that the original already established a strong visual language that players understood and, rep and responded positively language that players understood and, rep and responded positively to. And if you have that, if you're lucky enough to get that in a game, that's what makes it a hit. Don't replace it. For us, we found you can theme it. Basic zombie, themed. There's a new one up here, by the way. Coming very soon. Um, same head, same pose. Always wears a tie around his neck. But theming the basic zombie through the different time periods makes each one new and exciting for the player. And from a development standpoint, it's awesome because it's just a reskin for us. But it adds to our entire cast of our game. It makes it a much richer experience. And it feels like a two. It gave us so many takes on cast of our game. It makes it a much richer experience. And it feels like a two. It gave us so many takes on, it gave us so many new takes on old characters that it earned us the right and the room to create a bunch of new ones. And I think that we were successful. Um, I think we have made and are continuing to make a really fun, really amazing, and hopefully worthy sequel. That was our job when we started out. We, I wanted the plants that I brought to PVZ to fit with the plants uh, that were already sequel. That was our job when we started out. We, I wanted the plants that I brought to PVZ to fit with the plants uh, that were already there. And I quiver a little bit to say that. Um, it was really an amazing experience. So the key takeaways that I would give to the artists in this room who inherit uh, a mega hit game that you're asked to make the art for a sequel for, I know that's a very specific audience. Key takeaways, figure out the core elements of your game and do not replace them. Find ways to optimize for the platforms you're working on that will lead you to meaningful improvements. Choose the right theme for your needs, not the theme that sounds most obvious. Don't get attached right away. And once the player feels that sense of home, only then can you add the new stuff. Now, I know what you're thinking. That was a very short talk, because it's awesome. I just gave my first GDC talk, and I hope you enjoyed it. But there's some bonus materials. Uh, I just wanted to really quickly thank my team for their hard work and their friendship. Uh, they are amazing people. I wanted to thank the original PVZ team for creating a dream game to work on and PopCat for trusting me with the opportunity to make the sequel. Uh, so I'll show you some bonus materials. Because uh, I think it's awesome. I'm an artist. This is what I love to see from other artists. And then hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for questions. Uh, so these were just some early sketches. This is just a smorgasbord of stuff, guys. But this is uh, an environment exploration. These were some of Augie's very first sketches on how we would travel around in time. And that brought about the very, very crazy idea of uh, an RV that travels through time. Um, a lot of viz dev goes into those env background environments. They have about 16 different kinds of perspective going on at once. And it is very, very difficult um, to make those look believable. So I wanted to show just a little bit of his work. And then, uh, and then I kind of wanted to take you guys through the basic design process of a zombie and the basic design process of a plant, how we do that, um, at least how we did it on this game. So we start with a design idea. Like every zombie should represent, hopefully, just a single mechanic, and every plant should represent a corresponding opposite uh, mechanic, and those two complement each other. Um, so this was some of the early sketches for Parrot, or Captain Zombie. And you can see, real quickly, he just has a bird on his shoulder that he shields, and that flies off and steals your plants, and it's incredibly annoying. And uh, I actually did the voice acting for that bird. Um, this is our first sketch of it. Uh, 
That is a heinous bird. It has crapped all over his shoulder. Uh, it's not a great silhouette, and also this doesn't look very Plants for Zombies 2. So polish him up a little bit, get him vectorized. Uh, as you can see, this is more illustrative, more graphic. Um, and then show you guys some of the animation. These are all loops. Um, uh, we put little action tags in Flash that call this out, and the programmer just calls that action out when it's needed for the zombie. Um, now, this is a plant that actually didn't end up in our game, but did end up in uh, PVZ Adventures, and it's one of the first new plants we ever drew. And the idea for him was a, a short-range attack that was extremely powerful, but had a cooldown afterwards. And uh, he kind of ended up, and the idea for him was a, a short-range attack that was extremely powerful, but had a cooldown afterwards. And uh, he kind of ended up turning into Bonk Choi, but originally he was a beat. And so you have that mechanic, then you have to skin that mechanic in, uh, in whatever way looks the best, honestly, that still matches the PVZ theme. And you can see in this little roundup of sketches, we have some early uh, pea shooter, sunflower, walnut, and zombie down there. But that one in the middle was picked. Most people agreed that looks like a plant that belongs in our universe, and it looks like he could do that kind of attack. So we do a full color illustration, vectorize that, and animate it. And we changed him. Instead of smacking his head around, we decided he would do an uppercut, knock the enemy off the screen, and then take a little while to cool down, and then come back to life. And uh, yeah, there he is. Uh, he made it after all. I, I was really happy to see that. Um, all right, that is my talk. Uh, uh, we probably have a lot of time for questions. I talked a little bit fast. So, uh, shoot, go ahead. Until they give me the warning, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And by the way, I can't see any of you, so, yeah, go ahead. Let me stop you. They told me to specifically ask people to go to the microphone so that uh, people listening in the vault could hear this question later. Got you, OJ. Great presentation. Thank you very much. Um, did you have to do any negotiations uh, with development on how to optimize, um, you know, how just to make all of these cool... Uh, you know, ambient animations or reactions work? Uh, and did you ever have to, like, you know, cull some of that and, and dial it down a notch? Yeah, yeah, quite a bit, actually. Um, you know, in our game, there gets a point where a crazy amount is going on at the screen. So the interesting part is it's not for memory reasons that we would have to uh, sometimes take our special effects in particular w way back. It was just to keep the game from feeling too chaotic to the player in that end game scenario when you have as many plants as you can get on the board and there's as many zombies as possible coming at them. Uh, if, and that's one reason why uh, a very simplistic graphic style works so well for this game is the more detail and the more animation you add to it, the more that uh, visual noise can start to become too much for the player. And so we did have a few things that's like, all right, that looks really cool by itself, but once you see that done by 30 plants at the same time, it, it won't work. Yeah, good question. Thanks. If you've um, conquered time travel, what do you do for a third? You tell me, because uh, I really want to know. Um, well, luck. here's the, so I mean, we're making, uh, the cool thing about a games as a service and time travel, which I submit is a most excellent theme, is there are so many places we can still go uh, and make the game brand new at, at each one of those turns. Uh, yeah, but nope, that thought is in the back of my head, and uh, it's, a, it's a question I'm trying to answer, but I don't have an answer for you right now. Next is future, though. The future is where we're going next. 
Is that it? If you guys are hungry, I'm hungry too. All right, we'll, we'll call it good. Thank you very much.